we're going to do today is we're going to be cooking up some um, Pandawan or Cobia fish tacos or tostadas I'm sorry uh, tostadas because they're flat uh, but what we got we got the the Pandawan which we marked with a P which is also Cobia in the US or that I've heard it's called lemon fish by some of the subscribers this fish is from the uh, video uh the the big fish score uh so this is this is that giant uh cobia is about 30 pounds or 40 pounds big big boy so we got a lot of meat but this is just what we're cooking up uh today we're gonna uh you know cook it in with some coconut oil we only use coconut oil just because it's a medium chain triglyceride and it's your liver loves it and that it doesn't really screw your body up or it doesn't it's not inflammatory uh, coconut oil also um, won't go rancid for two to five years so it's really a stable oil uh, coconut and uh, olive oil are your only oils you should ever cook in so anyway I gotta get these out of the bag and then we're gonna also marinate them and I, I know this is uh, Mexican but I made some teriyaki sauce here and I put it in one of these uh, tanned away bottles that are so popular for reusing and uh, what I did to make the uh, teriyaki sauce I put quite a bit of honey in it and, and I'm not mixing it now because I already got it mixed from the last time but uh, honey uh, we buy this at the market here everybody's selling this stuff for 250 pesos for one of these I get it for 80 so don't let them rip you off because they're overpricing it and some honey's not good I got some honey up here that's real thick and heavy but if you look at the top there it's got this stuff that floats up I think it's cornstarch I think they put cornstarch in there to make it look real thick and like it's a really good quality but it, it when you get to that part this brownie yellowish stuff at the top I've got it upside down because when I pour it I want the pure honey I don't want the cornstarch or whatever that crap is inside of there to come out into my honey so I just kind of leave it upside down like that but beware because you will and they'll charge you 250 300 pesos or just you know that's six bucks for a little pint bottle 375 milliliters of uh, honey so anyway like I said I get it for 80 this is delicious it is real honey people go oh well, it's not 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 but it is I've even got a honey bee uh, in it and I have a video of the honey bee that I was pouring it out and something came out this brown lump and I looked at it and said that's a honey bee and also pieces of the uh, uh, wax and stuff uh, is sometimes in there so you, you know it's it's real hun honey and I've given it the honey taste test uh, so anyway I diverge from the subject here so I've got quite a bit of honey in there uh, a lot of ginger powder and uh, <coughs> excuse me some garlic minced garlic we just take like a clove or so one of these cloves here and uh, chop it all up and a little bit of soy sauce if you put too much soy sauce it kind of over salts it you know because soy sauce is a lot of salt in it very salty uh, so uh, and you'll do it to taste so first put your honey and your ginger and your garlic in and then add this and then keep it mixed up until it comes to the taste that you like uh, but if you start with this you may get too much uh, we're also using these corn tortillas and this is kind of amazing that in the Philippines you can actually get corn tortillas but we get these at uh, SM City uh, supermarket uh, and um, they're very thin though so we use two of them and then you'll see later uh, how we do it because if you just use one and you bite into it the, the whole thing will just crumble so we've got a way to uh, reinforce uh, this so that the tostadas work out really good and then we make our salsa like a salsa fresca we use tomatoes we dice them up small we got these uh, it's a serrano chili in the US I don't know what they call them here they're just long green green ones some onion uh, and we would use um, cilantro is what you're supposed to use but we don't have it here and they do have it at the markets 
in uh, Cebu, but we can't get it and keep it fresh here for long periods of time, and they don't sell it here on Battalion Island. Uh, we do have some basil that we're actually going to put in uh, with the teriyaki sauce when we marinate the fish, and uh, then um, you'll see that too. And I know basil's not Mexican and teriyaki's not Mexican, but it works out really well. <laughs> uh, it gives the meat, uh, the fish meat, a, a really good flavor. So we're going to jump in on this and um, start cutting these bags open and uh, get them started marinating, and then we'll start cooking. And we'll be back with more from My Paradise on Italian Island. Bye for now. Okay, we're back, and what we're going to do, we're going to take a... Uh, these uh, filleted Pendawan, um, I don't know if I should call them steaks or not, but uh, just kind of open it partially like that. And this has been thawing in the water. So these are the basic size steaks that we're going to use. Uh, always smell your fish uh, before you uh, start using it. This smells great. Nice and fresh. These are nice sized steaks. So uh, we may cut them up into smaller pieces. Uh, actually, when, whenever we uh, put these in uh, on the taco shell, we actually break them up so it's in chunks. And uh, so uh, that will uh, be how it's done. I'm going to rinse these off. Actually, I'll just rinse the whole bowl off. There, and that off. Get all that water out of there. Shake them. Don't break them. And uh, then I'm going to add some of my uh, teriyaki sauce. And we're going to have to chop up some basil too and put in here. Maybe we'll put it on a little later. But yeah, I, I did shake this up. There's some sediment, the ginger and whatever will settle maybe the honey will settle down here so you got to kind of be sure to shake it up or you'll kind of lose some of your seasoning and then basically I just pour it on here and it's a thicker sauce because it, this teriyaki is actually thick you know like real teriyaki is uh, because of the honey uh, and so that's basically it we just uh, get a fork and kind of rub them around in, in there and just marinate them for a few minutes i also stick them with the, the fork so that they will uh maybe get some of that teriyaki seasoning inside of there but first i kind of flip them around get them all sides kind of covered good and uh get the bottom ones on top and the top ones on the bottom so everybody gets a good uh, drink of the ter teriyaki and then I'll make a few little puncture holes in the sides here just so uh, that it will get a little extra absorption. There's a soft side and a harder side of the fish too. Uh, the outside is a little bit tougher and the inside is a little more uh, tender uh, but I'm just coming from the side where the fillet is and put some holes in here. I need two forks, really one to hold it and one to uh, poke it. But basically that's it. And once these uh, are in here for a little bit, then I will uh, start putting them in the, the pan. I gotta add the oil. I haven't added the oil yet. And again, it's coconut oil. That's all we ever cook in. And we'll be back as soon as these get done marinating. I got to put the rest of these uh, in a bowl. I'll probably get a larger bowl. This bowl's a little bit too small for all of these. And we'll be back with more from my paradise on Italian Island. Fish tacos, or sorry, fish tostadas tonight. Bye for now. All right. Well, what we're going to do now? We're going to put a little oil in this pan. And the label's gone from here because we actually reuse these. We buy these refillable containers of the coconut oil. This is like a small Bambi oil, but it's 100% uh, all natural coconut oil. I don't know if you can read that on the camera. It says vegetable up here, but when you read this, it says all natural, 100% all natural co coconut. They have Bambi, and we don't really buy those small ones. We buy the bigger ones, but like in this bag, and then we just refill fill this. Uh, this is Baggio pure coconut oil also 
So uh, it's one liter. It's cheaper to buy these and refill the jug than it is to buy a bunch of plastic jugs. That, and you know, the recycling is not that good here. So we just, you know, buy the minimal plastic footprint stuff. And we just put a little thin layer of here, maybe an eighth inch thick, three sixteenths inch thick. Not very thick at all because we're just, you know, cooking. It's, this isn't deep frying. This is kind of just kind of like searing. So. We can kind of see how much is in there, maybe. I don't know if you got a good enough angle to see, but it's just an eighth inch or so thick. And then uh, and then that's what we cook the fish in. We'll put some garlic in here and some onions in here before we put the, uh, and kind of let that kind of cook and season the oil before we actually uh, throw the fish in. And uh, But right now we're chopping salsa and doing some other things, so we'll be back with more from My Paradise on Battalion Island. Bye for now. All right, everybody, the other uh, ingredient that we're going to add to this to give it more of a Mexican thing, and again, this has got the teriyaki sauce, so we're kind of getting kind of crazy here, but we're going to put in cumin, uh, it says seed, but it's ground, it's, um, the other thing in the Philippines, you see this little plastic thing, if you don't seal your spices, the humidity is going to get in there and they're going to be all clumpy. Uh, and you're not going to be able to really dump them. They're not going to stay loose and stuff inside of here. They're going to get all glued from the humidity. So I'm going to put uh, some cumin on here. That's a Mexican flavor that I just love. And it's, if it's don't have cumin, and you see I'm kind of getting a little wild with this because I like it. And the other thing is chili. Now this says McCormick's, but it's really Thai chili that I brought from the U.S. Uh, we can't get any Mexican chili here. Uh, they've got chili, but it's like a weird color, and it tastes like a chemical, not like a plant. And so I don't buy it. Uh, but I, I will maybe be able to get this chili flakes and blend them up. See right here? Get these guys and blend these up. And this would make a good Mexican chili here, because this is the red uh, Mexican chilies. Uh, here, so I should actually be using this, but I'm, but I'm not, because I didn't grind, grind. So I'm just going to use this Thai chili to give it a little bite, and of course our our salsa has, you know, uh, chilies in it too, the, you know, the saran, and also we got to have quite a bit of bite there. Okay, and then I just mix it all up. It's already got the, you know, the teriyaki sauce in here. Uh, and I just got to kind of spin it all around and get it everywhere, mix it up, stir it up, kind of make sure everybody gets their fair share of the seasonings. And it might really be a better idea to actually put the seasonings into the sauce and then put the fish in here. I kind of did it in reverse order. So when you do it, you probably want to put your teriyaki sauce in there put whatever other additional seasonings you want in there, mix that up really good, and then put your fish in there and kind of bathe it uh, in that, and that way you'll get a better blend uh, of seasonings and, and, and that in all of your fish. So anyway, still marinating this, but I pulled it out of the fridge because I uh, remembered that I, I did want to put uh, some of this Mexican type uh, flavor in here. And again, the teriyaki uh, is kind of an odd thing for Mexican food, but it works. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, I got to put another bowl on top of here, and then put it back in the fridge. Uh, don't let your fish ever marinate outside. Your fish needs to stay cool all the time, or it's going to get uh, a fishy flavor here. So back in the fridge, and then we'll be back with more for my paradise on the Hawaiian Island. Bye for now. All right. The other thing we got to do is to mash up these red beans to make them more like a refried one. So you can try to do it with like a little fork, like a standard, you know, kitchen fork, like this size. But it doesn't, it's really hard to do. And we got this giant fork, and that works much better for mashing them. So we just mash them until they look like refried beans, and then uh, and then they're good to go. And again, we'll show you how. We use these uh, on the tostadas to keep from uh, the shell from getting broken. So we'll be back with more. And we, oh, we also got uh, the uh, salsa fresca stuff chopped up. We got the tomatoes. We got onions and chilies. 
and then uh, the cabbage we chopped up some cabbage that's going to go on top of the uh, tostadas uh, and then the garlic and the basil we're going to uh, use when we're uh, cooking the fish so we kind of got everything covered here I think we do need to uh, make some tartar sauce to put on top of the fish uh, and then we need to mix all this uh, you know salsa up uh, get it right and then we need to cook and I think we'll be good to go so we'll be back with more from my paradise on Italian Island mashing beans bye for now mixing the salsa fresca now so we just dump all the tomatoes in there and then we uh, scrape all of the put all the onions that's one whole uh, well that's a uh, yeah that's about 10 chilies we like it spicy and um, last time we did it it wasn't very spicy I think we put about six or eight chilies in in there this time we went I think with 10 and uh, then the onions and if we had cilantro, we'd definitely put that in there because that's a big plus when you're making salsa fresca. But the Philippines, well, Batania Islands, hard to find it. And then uh, just kind of mix it up. And you see the colors start to coming out. And uh, if you had some chips and, well, this would be the salsa. <laughs> but yeah. So it works without. You know the cilantro so if you're in the Philippines and or some country that doesn't have you know cilantro it's going to come out uh, pretty decent you know, you know I mean I love you know cilantro but uh, if you ain't got it you ain't got got it and so you got to make do with what you got and uh, so pretty much that's it so we're ready to go we got the beans all mashed up like refried style and I've got the, the oil over here getting hot I'm going to turn the fire up a little bit, had it down on low. There we go. Now we got the fire going under here just about right. That oil is going to get hot in just a couple of minutes and then we'll throw in the fish. So we'll be back with more from my paradise on Italian Island. Bye for now. Hi everybody, what we're going to do now, we're going to make some tartar sauce. And what we do is we just take mayo and uh, thing here. Uh, we put... Uh, I'm just making a small amount, just an, enough for a couple of meals of this. Uh, but we buy again. We buy. We don't buy mayo in the jars, although this is in a jar. We buy them in those plastic bags, those kind of recycle. Um, yeah, where you recycle your bottle or what have you. Uh, so what we do, simple to make tartar sauce. It's pickle relish and mayo. Some people might put a little lemon or lime in there, and that's okay. But uh, basically, these two ingredients, and you can see proportionally what I'm doing. Just kind of do it to your liking, right there. So I'm just going to kind of mix this up now until it looks like tartar sauce. And again, depending on how much you want to make. Depends on how many people or how many tostadas you want to be able to uh, have tartar sauce for. I'm going to put a little bit more in there. i got to get another spoon because that one's got uh, pickle relish on it. I don't want to get pickle relish in my mayo. Or it'll taste like tartar sauce. So I'm just about out of here. So I'm going to get all that we got in this container. But you get the basic idea of what I'm doing here. I'm just putting mayo in this, putting pickle relish on top of it, and voila, tartar sauce. So I'll put another little shot of that on there. Mix it up, and that's it. So once you get that done, hopefully you can see it. My hand's not in the way. You get a consistency like that, and that is tartar sauce. And if you want to make cocktail sauce, uh, you know, like shrimp cocktail sauce, you take ketchup and wasabi, and you mix those, and they make like shrimp cocktail sauce. So that's it. Done deal. All right, we'll be back with more from my paradise on Italian Island. Bye for now. Start this here by putting some onions in the oil to season up the oil. We're gonna put some uh, garlic 
in there with it. Just kind of get that oil seasoned nicely. Uh, and also, this is this uh, garlic and stuff is going to cook, but it's also going to stick to the surface of the fish. You'll see there's little brown spots on the surface of the fish. And this garlic sticks to them. It's really nice, and you can get that garlic uh, flavor. And not that garlic and fish is a real combo, but uh, I really like ginger, which is in the teriyaki sauce. So here we go. Yeah. All right, we're putting these guys in now. And it's going to take a couple of forks here so we can get it. this off of there. Basically, that's pretty hot oil there. So they're all just going to kind of... I don't know if I'd call it sear because we're really going to cook it thoroughly. It's not like tuna where you cook uh, just the surface. So we're actually going to cook these uh, here and see. I'm trying to lay them on the garlic and that so the garlic kind of sticks to the outside. Uh, so when the fish is done, uh, it's got like a, like a, all these garlic sprinkles are, are uh, stuck to the, the side of the fish and it helps give it that extra flavor. So uh, here we go. I'm trying to find a little piece that I can put in here in the sink, maybe, like that. Alrighty, so we will let this stuff cook this side for a little bit well what, what we're kind of going to do is watch 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 the white line go up and kind of see a little bit on the surface here and then we'll flip them and we may cook it on the side here too because these are really thick pieces uh, these are really kind of like steaks that you would grill uh, but that's what we got to work with and again we break them up and put them on the toast uh, the head of once they're all done so uh, we will be back with more from my paradise on Italian Island. Bye for now. All right, we're about halfway through cooking these. As you can see, we're getting a little whiteness here going around there, and it's kind of a little bit of whiteness coming through and uh, on the edges and, and, and that. As that creeps up, that tells us that we're just about ready to flip it. But not quite yet. You can see some of the juices coming out of the side here, the white uh, juices coming out. Uh, those are all signs it's it's cooking nicely. Uh, I'm check these again and see how we're doing. I still think a little bit more. See, how you got the darker brown here, but not here and not in these spots. So we're gonna let them go a little bit more. So, and some of these are like really thick. Like this guy's really thick. This guy's thick. This guy's thick. This 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 is thick. We got two thinner ones that we'll check them out. And I think a little bit more, but not much. Actually, I'm going to flip these small ones because I think they're really ready to, they're cooking up good. Yeah, that looks nice. And that one looks nice. So, as soon as these other ones cook up a little bit more, we'll flip them. Right. Flipping that guy, maybe a little bit early. I'm going to wait on the rest. So, we'll be back. Flipping. In just a minute. Bye for now. All right, I think uh, these guys are just about ready. See how this got kind of a little bit darker brown. Part of that is is a kind of like a it's not really burning the fish. It's like a car caramelization of the uh, teriyaki on there, and that's what kind of gives it that darker brown look. But uh, it works out really well with the fish tacos. This guy here, he don't want to flip right now, but we'll get him to flip. And I'm using a uh, uh, a metal fork in a Teflon pan which you don't want to really use but I'm only touching the meat I'm not touching the pan uh, so uh, when I get these out I'll use like a plastic spatula here all right we're just about there what I've done is uh, you know because these are really thick and so I'm turning them up on the sides to kind of cook and get a little bit of that uh, I guess a little bit of crispness because it's nice to have that texture in the tacos you don't want just mushy fish, you know, you want that little bit of that Christmas and uh, where, it, you know, it, the flavor from the teriyaki is more tasteable, I guess, if you kind of caramelize it. And uh, so that's basically what I'm doing at this point. I'm sitting them all up on the sides. I'll flip them to the other side just as soon as that side's uh, kind of got a little crispy uh, exterior. 
and then we'll be uh, good to go. And we actually got another batch of these uh, cobia steaks to cook up for the tostadas. We'll be back. Bye for now. All right. We've, uh, as you can see, we've kind of caramelized them on that side, and now we basically have like a little stone hinge of cobia here. So. <laughs> if you're wondering where the ancients got the idea for Stonehenge, it's when they were cooking uh, tostadas with cobia, <laughs> cobia steaks. And they thought, hey, we should do this with rocks, man. They look really cool. So anyway, <laughs> we will be back in just a couple minutes. They're almost done. Bye for now. All right. I think our Stonehenge uh, cobias are done. Yep, looks like it. One of the other things you'll notice whenever they're done they'll start to kind of fall apart when you touch them and I, I'm being very careful and using the tongs with these guys because they will just come right apart on, on, on you and the cobia is a really oily fish which is great because it stays moist uh, even though you can you know get this caramelization on them uh, they, it, it'll stay nice and moist uh, okay, nope. So we got that. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of basil on top of these just to kind of give it a little extra flavor. You cook with the basil, it kind of, the heat and everything from like frying kind of uh, uh, takes away some of the flavor. So if you smell the, if you can smell this basil, it'd be really strong, which is, this is fresh from our garden. So anyway, all that goes said, I gotta throw in the next batch and we'll be back with more from my paradise on Battalion Island. Bye for now. All right, uh, so these are the corn tortillas as uh, you may have seen earlier and we buy these at SM City. Uh, and you, sometimes you find them, sometimes you don't, but they're very thin. And some people cook these in oil, but we don't. Uh, we've got this uh, new way, let's see, like I said, they're pretty decent tasting. They're just really thin. So, uh, and again, I'll show you the trick that we use to, uh, so that they don't uh, uh, crack when you're eating them. So, there's like a curve size, so I'm kind of putting that down because I want these to stay flat. The other little trick that I use is take these knives and lay them on here, and that keeps the edges from curling up. And, uh, I'll center my little grill thing here. Uh, and that keeps the edges from curling up. And then they'll stay nice and flat, so it's easy to uh, use them for the tostada. That is, they, they're not all warped and stuff. Now, the other thing that you want to know is uh, these knives, when we're done here, they're 300 degrees. So you do not reach in there without a mitt and try to pick those knives up. And this is uh, basically what a new wave is in the U.S., but this is better, in my opinion. I'm setting it for about seven minutes or, or, or so. Uh, but uh, it's, it's glass, it's not the plastic, uh, so it's a, it's a lot better, uh, in my opinion, than the New Wave brand. So uh, if you're in the Philippines, and you can heat uh, fried chicken up in this, and it comes out crispy, so anything that you want to heat up and have a crispiness uh, retained, uh, this will do it. It's a convection oven's got the heating element in here also buy the solid element not the coil spring one and not the halogen light one because the coil spring one will burn out and the halogen light one will burn out but get the thick heavy uh coil i mean not coil but solid uh it's just a ring that goes around there and it's about half the size of my little finger here but uh, that'll last you we've had this for a year more than a year and we use it all the time it works great so uh, anyway we'll be back with more from my paradise on Italian island bye right, for now we're gonna show you how to we build these things and how we keep these little thin shells from cracking what we do we take some of this refried bean and you got to be careful at this stage uh, and smear it on the first we'll call it the first floor just drop some on the side here. Uh, we smear it on here like this and get a little layer on there. This is our kind of insurance policy, and plus it tastes good. Uh, it's like that. So basically, we got one smear there, and then we take the other tostada and just put it on top of there. 
and that there keeps the bottom one from cracking. Then we take the uh, fish and we just kind of break it up in chunks and uh, like this and put it all around here as much as you want. I mean, you can put a whole piece on there, but when you bite it, I mean, I don't know, it may pull all the topping off or something. I don't know. But anyway, we do it like that. Another piece here. Put some big chunks. You can see how nice and white this meat turn, turned out. Just perfect. So, however much uh, meat you like on your tostada or fish, that's how much you put on there. So I put that much on, on mine. That's a finger looking good too. Wow, it really is good. And then uh, the next thing I do, grab a tissue. And then I put the salsa on here. Try not to get too much liquid on there because, you know, the tomatoes, the diced ones there will uh, kind of let a lot of water out. You don't want your sock to start out soggy. And I like a lot of hot sauce and a lot of sauce. sauce. I like spicy food, so I really layered it on pretty good. Okay, so we got that. Then we take the uh, mayo. I'm just gonna kind of have to flop it on there because you can't really smear it or nothing like that. You just gotta, you know, uh, tartar sauce and just put to your liking. Just make sure you got some drops wherever you like it, like that. That's pretty good. And then you take the cabbage, and we use cabbage on fish, not uh, you know le lettuce. We use cabbage. It's, I think it goes better than everybody that I know, restaurants included. Uh, another thing, finger looking good, and voila, you're done. So it's time to eat. So you just, uh, you gotta be careful when you pick this thing up. What I do is, I usually just hold it the whole time. I never set it down because it gets complicated trying to pick it back up without things falling apart. And then you just bite in and go to town. Mmm. Mmm. No, that is good. That is excellent. Let's go. That's how we do it. Fish Tostadas in the Philippines. Wish you were here. Bye for now.